Hey, Ben here. Tables like this are often seen in chemistry textbooks. They describe how peaks in certain regions of the infrared spectrum indicate the presence of certain functional groups. For instance, if the infrared spectrum of your compound has a big peak at around 1700 wave numbers, it is likely to contain a carbon-oxygen double bond. But why is that? In this video, we're going to build on all the concepts we've discussed in earlier videos in this series. We're going to use computational chemistry to generate an infrared spectrum and vibrational modes of an organic molecule in order to gain more insight as to why certain peaks in an infrared spectrum indicate specific functional groups. Today's subject molecule is ethanoic acid. We're going to build it in IQ mol, run an ORCA calculation, simulate an infrared spectrum, and then visualize three vibrational modes using JMOL. We're then going to compare our simulated data to some real data taken from an online database. Now, before you start, make sure you have ORCA, JMOL, and IQ mol installed. You can find links to the software in the description below. We're going to start off by making a brand new folder called ethanoic acid. And the first file we're going to put into it is a .xyz file. So we'll open up the IQ mol. And just as before, we'll quickly draw ethanoic acid. So we'll place in the carbon skeleton, clicking and dragging to continue on on a single bond. Then we change to oxygen and we draw the two oxygen molecules. Then we place the double bond. Then we click add hydrogens. We minimize energy. And then finally we go to build and symmetrize molecule. Then we'll simply go to file, save as. Navigate to the directory you want to save it in and then give it an appropriate name. Bear in mind not to use any spaces within the file names. It can throw up various errors, so just use an underscore instead. We'll hit save. And then in this folder, we now have our XYZ file. We're done with IQmol now. Now we're going to open up Notepad and manually type out our input file. We start off by defining the basis set we're going to use. We put an exclamation mark and then PBE0. Now we type what things we want Orca to generate. So we give it an exclamation mark and we're going to want it to optimize the structure with opt. And then we want it to generate analytical frequencies. Then on the next line, we're going to put an asterisk space XYZ file. We then have to place the charge and the multiplicity. So it is an uncharged molecule and the it will be a singlet it doesn't have any unpaired electrons so we'll type a one and then finally we'll type ethanoic acid dot xyz and give a space and then put the final asterisk now we'll save this as a dot input file just go to file save as we'll navigate to the directory we're going to save it in and we'll give it an appropriate name followed by dot imp we need to make sure that when we save it as a type we do not accidentally save it as a .txt file, otherwise this won't work. We'll then hit save, and we can close this. We're done. So now we've got our .imp file and our .xyz file. So all that's left to do is to actually run the calculation. Now, many thanks to Laurentiu in the comments for this little tip. If you click here in Windows 10 to select the address, type in cmd and hit enter, that cracks open a command window which starts off in the directory you launched it from. That's super useful. I didn't know how to do that, so thank you very much for the tip. We're going to run the orca calculation now by very simply typing orca ethanoic acid dot imp. And we're going to type the greater than symbol and we're going to type ethanoic acid dot out. Now when I ran this before in the test run, it took three minutes. So I'm going to skip ahead to when it's finished. So I'm not going to do this in real time. So I hit enter and three minutes passed and you know it's finished when it opens up a new place you to start typing like this. So we're just going to minimize this window and we'll quickly check the dot out file. If we scroll right to the very bottom, 
it tells you how long it took and importantly it says that Orca terminated normally which is good news it means our calculation ran to completion. The next thing we're going to need to look at is the IR spectrum which is just above and we're going to pick out some of the peaks with the highest number in this column that means they contribute most to the infrared spectrum. We're going to have a look at 23, 19 and 15. If we scroll up, one last thing we need to do is look at this vibrational frequency section. You just need to make sure that none of these are negative. This is something that comes up quite a lot in my professional work. Sometimes this section will give me a negative vibration, and that means that the geometry optimization hasn't worked quite right. I might do another video about this, about how to fix this bug. Um, feel free to request it in the comments, and I'll, I'll consider it. But that's our orca.out. We're happy with that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the infrared spectrum. So we're going to use the command orca underscore map SPC ethanoic acid dot out. Now we want IR and we use minus x zero to put the lower x limit, which we will set at 400. And we use minus x one to put the upper x limit, which we will set at 4,500. We'll hit enter, and that will generate us our infrared spectrum as a dot dat file, which I will use LibreOffice to convert into a figure to show you at the end of this video. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to plot those vibrations. So we're going to use orca underscore plt vib ethanoic acid dot s all because let's just plot them all. If this was a bigger molecule and it had more than a hundred vibrations, I would specifically type the number of vibrations that I wanted. I'm going to type all just because it's nice and simple. It generates us the dot xyz files. And now you can see we've got all these lovely vibrations. So if we open up JMOL, we can simply click and drag the frequencies that we want to watch the vibrations for into the window. So we're going to start by looking at vibration number 15. If we go to Tools and Atom Set Chooser, we'll see that here it displays that the frequency is 1321 wave numbers. And if we hit play down here in vibration, We'll see the molecule starts to dance. Now, this frequency at 1321, the vibration seems to be dominated by this CH3 bending mode, which is kind of what we'd expect from that table we saw at the beginning of the video, right? I mean, parts of the molecule are moving as well, this OH bond is contributing a little bit, but certainly the, most of the atomic movement is going on at this CH3 group. I think it's worth getting an image of this. So we'll go to right click, go to file, go to capture, start capturing. We'll navigate to the directory that we've been doing all our work in and we'll name the GIF that we're going to output 1321 because that's the vibrational frequency that we're looking at. We'll just hit save and now the GIF will be slowly generated. So we'll let it vibrate for a few cycles and then right click, file, capture, and then we turn it to end capturing. I'll just pause this vibration. So that was vibration number 15, which was happening at 1321 wave numbers. Let's have a little look somewhere else in the spectrum. Let's have a little look at vibration number 19. So we'll just replace that model. And as we see in the atoms that choose, the vibration 19 happens at 1938 wave numbers. Let's hit play here. And this time, we see that the molecular movement is dominated by this carbonyl bond stretch. So carbonyl is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen group. That's, again, roughly what we'd expect from our understanding of general infrared spectroscopy, according to that table we saw. Again, other parts of the molecule are moving as well, but by far and away, most of the movement is this C double O stretch. Let's capture this vibration as well. Again, I'm going to save it in the ethanoic acid directory, and I'm going to name it after the vibrational frequency, 1938. 
I'll hit save, it can start capturing, let it run for a couple vibrational cycles, and then we'll tell it to end the capture. Let's look at one last frequency. Let's look at the very last one, vibration 23. So this vibrational node occurs at 3872 wave numbers, and if we hit play to watch the atoms move, we can see that it is dominated by this OH stretch. Again, based on that table we saw at the beginning of the video, this is where we'd expect that frequency to be. I'll add this to our growing gallery of vibrational modes. We'll put it in the ethanoic acid directory and again we'll name it after the vibrational frequency. We'll hit save, let it run for a few cycles. And then we'll stop that capturing. I've converted the calculated vibrational spectrum we generated at the beginning of the video into an image using LibreOffice. Check part two of the series for a refresher on how to do that. And I've put it next to an experimental spectrum that I've obtained from the spectral database for organic compounds. See the link below. When we're comparing these two spectra, we need to remember that the calculation we set up was performed on just one molecule of ethanoic acid. In real life, a molecule of ethanoic acid will never be alone. It will be surrounded by solvent or by other molecules of acid. These other molecules will interact with the ethanoic acid molecules, for example, by hydrogen bonding with the OH group, and we call this a solvent effect. Solvent effects are very important when it comes down to the exact shape of an infrared spectrum, so we wouldn't necessarily expect our calculated spectrum to match up to the experimental spectrum. Despite this, we can still see some peaks which look very similar in the two spectra, which I've highlighted using the coloured stars. Almost as if planned, these peaks correspond to the vibrations we were looking at earlier. Now if you compare this slide to the table I showed at the beginning of the video, link in the description, you can see clearly where these features come from, and just how powerful infrared spectroscopy can be to identify the presence of functional groups in molecules. Try this out yourself and some molecules using your home computers. What happens to the infrared spectrum when you change the structure of the molecule? Use the tools I've taught you so far to do a few investigations of your own. Maybe compare carboxylic acids to ketones or aldehydes. Until next time.